Hi, so um, we are going to be talking about the nervous system. Um, we're starting off with um, just knowing the anatomy um, of the nervous tissue. Uh, so that's what today will be about. So of that guided notes, only half of it will be learned today and the other half will be learned later. So um, nervous system function, your definition, your mastery, sensory, communicating and controlling the system of the body. Its main job is to maintain homeostasis. Um, an example like this diagram here um, explain how the nervous system would sense, communicate, and control. So this would be your heart here, right? So let's say your heart rate is above the homeostatic um, level um, and um, 75 beats per minute. This would be sensed here. You, your sensory organs would sense that. It would make a decision to bring it back down. And then your efferent neuron would come here and bring the heart rate back to where it needed to be which would be part of negative feedback mechanism. So um, of what I was just talking about, you have three different, um, sorry, go that way. Um, you have three different structures that help uh, maintain your homeostasis. You have your sensory input. Um, that means your senses. So that would be like your sight, your hearing, your touch, any of those things. Um, so and since here he's sensing, he sees the water, right, sensory input, his afferent nerve would um, d monitor the change occurring inside and outside, send the signal to the integrative center. The integrative center is just another word for control center. So we've already learned about control center, but now we're learning about um, the integrative is another word for that, the integrative system. And then your efferent with an E nerves would respond and send signals back to your effector organ. It would contract your um, bicep right your bicep brachii would contract causing causing flexion and the water would go up and you would drink it so um, afferent nerve is going in it's like your sensory neurons and efferent with an e nerves are um, your effector organs okay so your motor division um, a big part of this is knowing how everything is divided um, we'll learn it goes way more and more divisions but for now I'll just know the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system your central nervous system is more of control so that's me your brain and spinal cord that will be like your integrative system or your control center the peripheral nervous system is going to be your afferent and efferent nerves. These are either spinal nerves. Your spinal nerves go to and from the spinal cord and your cranial nerves, which go to and from the brain. So it just means where it's going. So spinal going to the spine, cranial, it's going to the brain. You have 31 um, spinal nerves and 12 cranial. It used to be part of our curriculum to memorize all of those, but now um, we just have to know a couple um, of those. So just know that cranial nerve versus spinal nerves. So um, your brain and your spinal cord are all part of your central nervous system. In your peripheral nervous system, you have the spinal nerves which are going to and from the spine, and your cranial nerves are all going to and from the cranium, the brain. Um, okay, so you have two different types of um, nervous systems. First one is somatic. Your somatic nervous system is what we just learned. So that was the action potential controlling skeletal muscle. So it's all about what your efferent um, what your effector organ is. So in the somatic nervous system, it's skeletal muscles. So this is action potential going to um, in the sliding filament theory. So that's somatic. Autonomic is everything else. So autonomic would be like your smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and your glands. That's everything that's involuntary. So again, somatic is your muscles. Autonomic nervous system deals with smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and your glands. So um, in this picture, um, you're going to analyze it, and that will be part of the Ed Puzzle question. Okay, so most of the lecture today is going to be on knowing the structure of the neuron. So your neuron is a cell, um, is the cell of the nervous system. So there's specific structures. So we'll start with the neuron. This is actually uh, what a neuron looks like with an electron microscope. Um, this would be like the cell of their body. So this is what you would see here, okay? Um, Alrighty. Okay, so the anatomy. So this is all labeling identification for this first part. So the axon is the long section that transmits the impulse. That's this section right here. That's what was part of muscle contraction. That's what came. That was a, that was like the beginning of it. Um, your soma, which is right here. This is the cell body, and that's where you'd find the nucleus. 
Your dendrites are what receives information um, from a previous neuron. Um, so the dendrites is the, so like when you're talking about the pathway, it would actually come in this way. Um, so you have your dendrites, which are these structures are the small extensions of the cell body. They receive information. Very important. You can kind of see direction of the nerve impulse input. This is your soma. That's where you'll find your um, nuclei. And you have your axon, which is the long section that transmits the um, action potential. Um, around the axon, you have these insulated structures called myelin. What it does is it controls the signal and makes it go faster. So it um, insulates it so that the signal can move even quicker. You have the nodes of Ranvier. The nodes of Ranvier are the spaces in between each myelin. So uh, the myelin will be this yellow structure here. That's the insulation. Um, and those would be your nodes of Ranvier. The neurofibrils are the fibers within the axon. So if you took your um, if you took your neuron and you cut it in half and you were looking at it, that would be your neurofibril, um, and it kind of holds the structure. So you kind of have, have to see inside of it. You would have to cut it in half and look inside of it to see your neurofibrils. In this picture, I just wanted to show you from this one. These would be your myelin sheath right here. The myelin. These are your myelin. The insulation that's insulating your axon, and the space in between it would be um, the nodes of Ranvier. And then if you look, um, you can kind of you have to cut it in half in order to see the neurofibrils. Okay, so that's the structure of the neuron. Now we're just going to talk about there's these little helper cells. So a neuron can't do it all by itself. The neuron's job is to get action potential from that cell into the next. So it's just it's to transport um, signals. But there's a lot of other things that have to occur. For instance, what if a bacteria comes? What's going to fight it? Um, what's keeping it clean? Um, and other things. So that's what we're going to talk now. The helper cells are called neuroglial cells, and they're just neuron supports. So the first one is called microglial. So when you're talking about these, you need to be able to identify it by looking at it and knowing what its function is. So the microglial cell um, looks very spiky, looks like it has thorns. So the microglial, when you look at it, like it literally looks like the outside of thorns. Its job is to digest debris and bacteria. So you will find these in between neurons, and again, they have that thorny um, appearance. Um, so they are there to pretty much make sure that the cell is not being um, digested or is being attacked by bacteria. So it is going to fight the bacteria. Um, it's kind of like a helper to the white blood cells, but it's there like on site all the time. Because as you know, you do not want an infection of your neurological system. The next structure is called the oligodendrocytes. Um, the oligodendrocyte, it looks like an O. That's how I kind of always remember this. It looks like a, it's the only one that's a circle, like an O, um, oligodendrocytes. And its job is to produce the myelin sheath. So when you're looking for it, you'll always see that it's attached to the myelin sheath. Why? Because it produces it. Okay, and remember, these are very, we'll learn more about their their, their function of the myelin sheath and how it's so important to have it. But for now, just the oligodendrocytes produce your myelin sheath. It looks like an O, just like O, oligodendrocytes, O. The next one is called the astrocytes. Your astrocytes will be connected to your blood vessels, and it basically just connects your blood vessels to the neuron. So it's there to make sure that your neuron is getting the oxygenated blood that it needs and taking away the deoxygenated blood that it um, to go back to the heart and be oxygenated again and come back. Um, cells thrive on oxygen. Without it, it would not exist and not be able to work um, and you want your neurons to work otherwise you're not going to have any sort of um, brain activity at all. So astrocytes are connected to the blood vessels. So how I can tell if it's an astrocyte versus um, any other of the um, neuroglial cells, it's attached to the blood vessel. So find your capillary, find your artery and your veins and then that's when you'll see it. 
The next one is called the ependymal cells. Um, you won't always see the ependymal cells. It's only in the brain. So um, the ependymal cells will be lining the brain cavity. They're usually like a square shape and they're all lined together. Um, they're there to help circulate cerebral spinal fluid that's there for cushioning of the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, um, so this is a good um, opportunity to take a look. So this right here would be your neuron, right? Um, this would be the soma, your dendrites, your axon. This would be your oligodendrocytes. I could tell because it's attached to the myelin sheath and it looks like an O. This would be your astrocyte. I could tell this is my astrocyte because it's connected to my blood vessel, my capillary. Remember your blood vessel, um, your astrocyte connects your blood vessel to the neuron. My microglial cells is here. You can it looks very kind of spiky, um, so that's how I can tell. And it's in between two neurons, um, and I think that was all of them. The ependymal, of course, which is right over here, which it lines the cavity. So if you see an ependymal cell, that means that we're looking at a brain um, or anything in the central nervous system. The last one is your Schwann cells. Your Schwann cells can only be seen if you take your myelin sheath and cut it and look into it. Um, if you cut your myelin sheath and you look inside, you'll see like just this Schwann cell. Um, it forms, it surrounds and forms your myelin um, around larger nerve fibers at the peripheral nervous system. So again, you're only gonna find this one in peripheral nervous system. Um, I already wrote about this, but I just wanted to reiterate because there's so many things that deal with. So the myelin sheath, it serves as insulation around your axon. Um, in this picture, it just this is just review now. So astrocytes connect to your blood vessel. Oligodendrocytes connect to the um, myelin sheath because it's producing it. Your microglial is digesting bacteria and is there to protect. And your ependymal cells will line the cerebral spinal fluid or it will line the cavity of the brain, but it will, it's there to um, have the fluid move around. Um, and then this picture here, so um, the big thing is find your neuron first, and then from there you can kind of look around. Um, you have your, there's my capillaries, so that means this must be my astrocyte, because that's what it does, it connects the two. Um, then you have your oligodendrocytes, it's connected to my myelin sheath, it produces it, and this is my microglial, because it's like they're spiky, they have that spiny appearance to them. Okay, um, so you're just going to do the questions of the Ed Puzzle now and just help to um, label the structure. Um, the last thing is the type of neuron. So you have bipolar, unipolar, and multipolar. You don't really know when you know what it looks like, but you know where they are. So your bipolar is a specialized sense. You're going to find this in the retina of the eye. The bipolar would have, um, it's kind of like your, your soma is in the center, in the middle. Your unipolar is sensory receptors, so that would be, it's also in the center, but it has like a little, um, the axon kind of extends outward towards it. Um, and the multipolar is one that you usually learn about with like your um, dendrites on one side um, is the most common. That's why that's the neuron that you see the most. Um, and those are three or more processes. And that's a part of the motor neuron. And that's why we, we mostly talk about that one. Um, so you have myelinated um, and not unmyelinated. Your myelinated is the white matter. You're really going to see this when we dissect the brain. Um, myelinated axons are quicker and have signals moving a lot faster. So that's going to be like a lot of um, where it's trying to get one signal from one spot to the next very fast. Unmyelinated, which is gray matter, um, is uh, mostly nerve cell bodies and um, it's slower. So maybe that's somewhere where you process information. So uh, white matter versus gray, when you look into the brain, you're actually gonna see where the matter looks gray versus, um, it looks white versus gray. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll learn about the nerve function. You'll do the next Ed Puzzle um, on Monday night for Tuesday. Okay, thank you very much.